Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am Yvonne Gutierrez and today I'm going to be baking chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to be using the Nestle Toll House recipe. It's a classic. I feel like it's easy to do. Um, please excuse this whole <laughs> look. I'm obviously doing this from the comfort of my home. No makeup. We're in the quarantine time and I am going to share some pointers with you when I bake or anytime I'm in the kitchen, I'll say number one is you want to be clean. So that entails having your hair up. You know, you don't want to have hair loose and, and flying everywhere. So as you can see, I have my hair braided and put back. The worst thing is you don't want someone to get anything and get sick off of anything you made or get grossed out if they find a hair. Um, most important, we want to wash our hands. So let's get started. I'm going to start off wash my hands. And I know during this quarantine time, there are a lot of tutorials about proper hand washing. So you definitely want to make sure we're doing that. You get this going. And right now, I'm trying to save on paper because it's hard to find paper towels. So using a lot of trapos right now. We want to save those paper towels. <laughs> Another thing is a little bit of comfort. My husband poured me some wine, said I needed to relax a little here. I know it's taking a long time for me to get started, but another thing I want to mention is that I'm not wearing any rings and you don't see paint on my fingernails. So that's especially important if you're going to need dough, work with your hands. One of the grossest things I see is that people will need dough or use their hands to turn masa or something and they have rings on. There's a lot of bacteria in rings. So I'm gonna read the ingredients quickly of what we wanna have. You wanna make sure you have brown sugar. You wanna make sure we have granulated white sugar, regular white flour. We have baking soda. We have salt, vanilla, two eggs and we want to have two sticks of butter so each stick of butter is half a cup together one cup i left my butter out so it could get room temperature but it's still a little um hard and i like to melt my butter i'm going to go ahead and do that another thing you'll notice is if you're using melted butter it makes your cookies spread a little more some people like soft cookies, some people like crispy cookies. I'm one of those who enjoys a little crisp crunch to her cookies. So two sticks of butter right here in this microwavable dish. I'm going to put it in the microwave for about 15 seconds. I don't want it too melted, but soft enough. So let me get that going. is going I have two eggs that I cracked I always like to crack my eggs separate in a separate bowl because you never know if you're going to get an eggshell in your eggs and you don't want to mess up your whole batter and you never know if you're gonna have like a bad egg either um, there have been times where I cracked an egg and it's had like a little bit of blood or something in it so you don't want to ruin your batter with that Alrighty, so I'm going to start off with the base. Let me get a spatula here. My two sticks of butter, you can see they are not um, totally melted, but they are definitely soft now to the touch. So, scoop out my butter. And I'm using my KitchenAid stand. You don't have to have one of those. You could use an electric mixer. You could even hand mix it yourself. But for me, this is what's gonna go fastest. So 
So let's see here. I'm going to start off with my sugar. So I put two sticks of butter. I have one fourth of a cup. I'm going to put three of these into my dough or to my butter mixture. So this one's pretty even. So there's one, two, three. I'm going to use the same the same scoop to get my brown sugar because they're both sugars. The difference between them is one is just plain white and the other brown sugar has molasses in it. Gives it a different flavor. Usually I would do this really quickly. So I'm gonna try to do this. So there's one packed scoop, there's one Here's a second, two, and three. So there we go. Next, I'm going to turn on the KitchenAid mixer to let this get going before I add the eggs in. Let's get this locked into place. going to be creaming together. Well, that's creaming together. I'm going to go ahead and get started on my dry ingredients. So for my dry ingredients, there are different tips people recommend that you sift your flour. Um, that's so that you don't get clumps in it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just making some quick chocolate chip cookies. So let's do this here. So I'm going to do two cups of all-purpose flour. So I'm packing it down. So here's one here's my second one I'm packing down the flour into this measuring cup two and let me see here I don't have my other fourth of a cup. And then one fourth of a cup. So that so far, two cups of flour, and then just one fourth is my remaining one. So there goes the flour. Now, next we are going to add the salt and, well actually we're going to add in the baking soda. So we will need a teaspoon of baking soda. And here's one teaspoon. Let me get this measured right. One teaspoon. Next, a teaspoon of salt. Here's a quick tip. If you don't want to over salt it, pour it over a different cup, not over your dry ingredients, so you don't have extra storage. So here's about one teaspoon of salt. So even though we're baking something sweet, why do we add salt? The salt's gonna actually contrast and bring out the sweetness. So you can do this a quick mix. Nothing fancy. Try not to dirty up so many dishes so I just use the same butter knife. So there we go with that. 
Now, let me come back. We'll leave the dry ingredients there. We're gonna add the eggs into this batter. And if you recall, I have cracked the eggs in a separate bowl. So we just added that there. Next, don't forget to get your little sip of wine. One of the other things I should have mentioned is we should have probably have this preheated. I'm gonna preheat my oven at 350 degrees. Got it started. The other thing I had already started was I have my baking dish here. I'm using a silicone pad to line my baking sheet. You don't have to have one. You could use Cam spray oil. Um, one of my favorite things to use is, of course, a silicone pad or parchment paper. Do not use wax paper. <laughs> parchment paper is the one that is oven safe. So I'm going to hit the speed a little bit more on this. While this is going, I think it's a good time to add in the vanilla. We're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla here. There we go. Let that incorporate. Just a little bit more. Next, we're going to add in our dry ingredients. Little by little, so that we don't get a floury mess that poops up. This is a spatula I was using earlier to put the butter in. So let's do this. Scoop the batter on the side. We want to make sure everything's going to be incorporated correctly. We don't want to have floury spots of unevenly mixed batter. They're pretty noisy there. Okay. Now it's got nice and quiet. Now let's go ahead and mix it a little bit more. You can smell this. It smells so good already. You can smell the sugary sweetness and butter. All right. So this looks like. Actually, there's a little bit more flowery parts on here. So I'm going to mix this another time because I just found this little glop of flour mixture. So I want, again, I want that incorporated correctly. This is our cookie dough batter, but now what's missing? Chocolate chips. If we're gonna make chocolate chip cookies, we need the chocolate. Yep, we need that chocolate. So let me take this off of the machine. 
So why am I not, why am I not um, keeping it on and mixing the cookie, the chocolate chip chips in here with the mixer? Because it breaks them up. I don't want them all broken up. And I found that it doesn't really distribute it evenly. Plus it makes my machine go all crazy because the dough gets so lumpy. And I want this machine to last me a long time. So yeah, I'm trying to get as much of the cookie dough off of here as possible. Okay. So here we go with that. Next, I gotta get those chocolate chips together. All right, so here's this, um, I don't know if you can see this cookie dough. Deliciousness. It smells so good. Now I gotta get the chocolate chips. I probably should have had them out before I started, but I didn't. I keep my chocolate chips in the freezer. Why do you ask? Because I want them to stay fresh. So the cookie chips we want, it, it depends how many chocolate chips you like. Um, a lot of recipes call for two cups. I believe the toll, the Nessie Toll House one calls for two cups, but I find that it's a little too much for our taste buds. So I'm only going to reduce it by half a cup. Therefore, I'm going to add one and a half cups. Here we go. Here's one cup. And I'm just going to add this about half a cup. Another thing I should mention is typically we want to clean as we go, but since this is on video, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> All right, so look at these little chocolate chips we're on here. Let me mix these in first before I add the second ones in. the next batch of chocolate chips and there we are incorporate these chocolate chips cookies these chocolate chips into the dough well so here we go you know, I know there are a lot of people who love cookie dough and would be tempted to eat this, but you have to remember there's raw egg in there. So I, that's a chance I wouldn't want to take. Now I'm going to use ice cream scoopers. We have two different sizes for our cookie. You know, I don't want to sound like I'm a person who overeats and had like five cookies. So I'm gonna use the big ones. That way I could say I only had one cookie or maybe two versus five little ones. So here's my first scoop. Gonna put this down onto the cookie sheet. And we just heard the beep. That meant that the oven is preheated. Now, a lot of recipes will tell you to let your cookie dough rest by putting it in your fridge and letting it sit before you scoop it. You can definitely do that. I don't think it's necessary. Plus, I'm not that patient. So I think I wanna get this started like now. Nothing like having some fresh baked chocolate chip cookies out of the oven. 
or your house smelling delicious because of these cookies. You might have these a little too close. These are big scoops and I think I have them a little too close. Oh well, <laughs> we'll have to break them up from each other. We'll have to break them up later. So as you can see, I've scooped out the cookies here. Um, these are large ones, they're gonna flatten out. I typically, I probably shouldn't have placed them so close to each other because they're likely going to touch. But I'm making them for us here at home. We're more interested in the taste than the look. So I'm going to pop these in the oven for about... I can put my timer on. I'm going to cook them for 12 minutes. Typically... Some people like them maybe t um, for 10 minutes. You could do less, depending if you like them more gooey and soft. I like them soft in the middle with the crunch around the edge. So I know my oven for my oven, 12 minutes is like perfect. So I'm getting these out to put down when the cookies are ready to come out of the oven so they don't burn the top. And of course, I don't want to burn my hand, so I have my little glove, Spanish, my guante, ready for use. Now, you'll notice I have another smaller cookie sheet out here. The reason I have this out is because I'm not going to bake all the cookies. Um, there's only two of us here. We don't need to have that many cookies prepared for us. Plus... We, a lot of people are gaining weight from being home. <laughs> I'm definitely one of them. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put cookies on this tray that I already have lined. And I'm going to put them in the freezer. So if I we have a craving for cookies later on, we have ready to go cookie dough that we could just pop them in the oven. Remember 350 degrees. You would do them anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes, depending on your preference. For these, I'm going to use the smaller scooper. And since we're not baking them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put these closer to each other because we're going to freeze them. So it's not like they're going to break, bake and spread on the cookie sheet. See how these are all lining up here. So anyhow, my cookies are going. I have these getting ready and we'll be back to show you the results. So the timer's about to go off. These cookies are about to be ready. And my apologies, everyone, I kept referencing 350 degrees for your oven, but it's actually 375 degrees. So apologies for that. I don't think you hear it, but that's the timer going off. So let's see what we've got here. Ooh, just the way I like them. We have some giant chocolate chip cookies. If you recall, I said that I had placed them too close to each other. I knew this was going to happen, that they were all going to touch. But I was overly excited and only wanted to bake one batch. Let me turn off the oven. Oven is off. Anyhow, once these cool down, it's not a big deal. We're going to be able to break them apart. So, hot, fresh cookies tempting to eat them, but we want to give them a couple minutes to cool down and set. 
move them. Just gotta kinda break them apart. There they go. Anyhow, that was Beppe's cookie. Now this is my cookie. Again, you can see all the chocolate chips, buttery. So let me, ooh, they're crispy on the outside, but they're still soft in the middle. Mm. Those are like a gooey chocolate chip cookie. When I'm saying gooey, the chocolate chip is gooey. Mm. Well, mm -mm -mm. hope you enjoyed watching us make these cookies. I want to gobble this up. <laughs> My hands are all buttery from using that butter on there. If you recall, we had put some into the freezer, that raw cookie dough. I'm going to transfer that into a freezer Ziploc bag. And next time we want cookies, all we got to do is whip them out on the cookie sheet just like we did this way and bake them at 375 degrees for, to, for 10 to 12 minutes. Depending on your oven, it might be less or more. We hope you enjoy. I'm Yvonne Gutierrez, and just wanna say, salud. <laughs>